come on in on Wednesday night. Then Thursday evening, we'll be coming into this sanctuary here to worship for a while. And then pastor's going to be ministering to us, speaking to the church and teaching. And after that, we're going to have corporate prayer meeting, and our pastor's going to be leading that, Pastor John. And uh, I, I want to say something. You know, revival, revival and what we've seen happen at Brownsville just doesn't happen by accident. It happened because the church and the pastor were praying and asking God to send it. And I'm so excited that we're going to be doing that again. That's just great. We've been praying on Tuesday evenings, but it will be on Thursday evenings now. And then Friday and Saturday night, every week, until whenever the Lord says quit, uh, Steve Hill will be ministering. It'll be revival services as, we, as we've known them. And then Sunday morning, Brownsville folks, and anybody wants to come. And uh, it's exciting. But every Friday night, for the last three and a half years or so, we've been doing something that I really love that... That, you know, when I was growing up as a boy, we didn't do it every week, and I'm just glad we do it now every week because we believe at Brownsville that it's, that it's a commandment to be baptized in water. We believe that if Jesus himself felt the need, being the Son of God, if he felt the need to be baptized in water, how much more should we who are trying to follow him, how many want to be like Jesus? Oh, me too. So I, we believe here at Brownsville that everyone who confesses the name of Jesus and believes in their heart that Christ, that God raised him from the dead, we believe that after they've made a profession of faith, they need to be water baptized, signif signifying bearing the old man and rising new. Isn't that great? So right now, about 14 candidates are coming. And uh, after we're finished with this, I've already got a good sweat going. And uh, we're just going to worship the Lord. Now, I want to tell you something. No matter who you are tonight, Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, heathen, pagan, New Age, uh, Satan worshiper, anybody. We're going to do some more of that worship that even you can be a part of. And, and we're going to just glorify God, the Creator, and thank Him for His Son, Jesus. And we believe God's going to change you before you leave. He's going to change us. We're here to see Jesus, not Steve Hill, not Lyndall Cooley, not anybody at Brownsville. We're here to see Jesus only. God bless you. Hi, my name is Candy, and before I really get started, I just wanted to say that when I was 14, my mom said she wanted to move to Florida. I said, there's no way. I'm not going. I'm not leaving my friends. I'm not leaving my school. Well, I moved here two months ago, and um, I'm happy. He's made me happy. Um, when I was five years old, I was sexually abused over a period of years until I was 12, by four different men continuously. And I've carried that burden for a long time. And uh, he set me free. He's delivered me from sexual addictions, self-mutilation, He's cleansed me to do his work, to do a mighty work because it's time. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I give you everything, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you because you confess Jesus as Lord, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My name is Cheryl Davidson. I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut. I was saved five years ago, but after I was saved, I backslid really bad. And then June of 98, the Lord started working on me, and the doors opened for me to come to Brownsville. I came to Brownsville September 98, and Steve Hill preached about forgiveness. I didn't go to the first altar call, but then he said, if you have any 
if you need to be forgiven, you know, ask the person next to you. And this man that was sitting up in the balcony asked me if I needed to be forgiven. And I said, yes. And we came to the altar and I poured my heart out to Jesus completely. Just completely let myself be Jesus and none else. And now the Lord has brought me back to Pensacola. He set me free on the front steps of the, of the altar. He set me completely free from everything in my life. He turned my life around. He turned my life around. I gave him myself 100% in Jesus. 100%. No going back, just going forward. I love my Jesus. He provided me a house to live in Pensacola. He provided me Christian friends. And he's told me that I will be in missions. And I'm giving my whole life to him completely. Completely and unreservedly to Jesus. Because he's with you through everything. Because I can tell you I was in the pits of hell. And Jesus pulled me out every time. And this time I'm not going back. I'm going forward to Jesus. My name is Laura Martin, I'm from Wisconsin, and I've been a Christian since I was really young, but just recently God has shown me how often I take what he did on the cross for granted. It's so easy to forget in our everyday lives how much he suffered for us. And so, from this day forward, God, I promise that I'm not going to take it for granted anymore. And I'm just going to move on in you. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm from Marshall, Illinois, and I came to Pensacola with my family because I thought, I just came with my family, and I thought it was going to be a bad thing. But last night, I got set free from demonic spirits. And I just praise God because my life is so much better. And about a month ago, I got set free of demonic spirits. And the devil, he just, he's been tormenting me. And there's been so much pain. And I just don't want anybody to go through that pain that I went through. And I praise Jesus. I pray for the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh. Hi, I'm Stephanie Brewer from Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, if I go to school in Denver. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, God delivered me from lukewarm Christianity. I was a lukewarm Christian for so long, and I was so miserable, so miserable. Because I, I was miserable doing the things I wanted to do, and I was miserable doing the things I, my parents told me were right. And so I didn't know what to do because I was miserable anyway. I rededicated my life so many times. But it didn't do anything. I just failed because I tried to do it by myself. But we can't do it by ourselves. <laughs> um, this past summer, I, I retaliated my life, and I, I got rid of my bad friends. And um, 
I made some really cool friends. I, I made a friend, um, Joshua Sewell. He goes to the School of Ministry here, and he's from Greensboro, too, and, and Jason. And we started watching Brownsville videos, and, um, man, <laughs> we did everything that Steve Hill told us to do. We'd stand up next to the couch and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but, like, after those videos, we would just cry and cry in front of the TV on our faces <laughs> because he said that there was more, and I believed him. <laughs> And ever since then, I've been on fire for God. And, um, man, I just want y'all to know that um, if you're miserable doing what's right, <laughs> what people say are right, and you're miserable doing what's wrong, oh, my gosh, go after God more. Amen. Go after him. <laughs> he's so awesome. He's, oh, my gosh, he's so awesome. And I'm so happy. <laughs> Oh, wow, well, okay. <laughs> Stephanie, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Rose, and I'm originally from Texas. Jesus. I was 17 years old and I was in the party scene. I was doing drugs and having premarital sex and I got pregnant. And I, my, my boyfriend at the time and I decided that we were going to have an abortion. And so two nights before we were supposed to go I prayed, and I asked if there was a God out there, if he would show me, show me what I was supposed to do. I knew I wasn't mature enough or responsible enough to have that baby, but I wanted, I wanted the Lord to show me. So two mornings later, we left. We got in the car, we were on our way to Houston. We were 20 minutes from the abortion clinic, and the tire blew out on the car. <laughs> But the tube was still on the tire, just the trend had blown off, so it was enough where we could turn around and make it back home. And so we went back to the house of my mom. I brought out a picture of Jesus. She doesn't go to church or anything, and she, she brought out a picture of Jesus, and she told me what I do is between me and Jesus, and what other people do is between them and Jesus. And so I, I decided to have the baby, and the father left me. And I got saved two weeks after he was born. And... In November of 97, when the baby was 11 months old, I left him with my mom and I came here to Brownsville. And the Lord brought me this much closer to him. <laughs> and I, I met a wonderful man in the school of ministry. His name's Aaron Timberlake. <laughs> and the Lord provided a wonderful father for my baby. <laughs> and a husband for me. <laughs> and I want you out there to know that if if, you, if you've aborted your babies or if you're thinking about it, the Lord can deliver you. He can set you free from that pain. Thank you, Jesus, and I give my whole life to you. Baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hi, <laughs> um, my name is Jamie, and I'm from Nebraska. I'm in the school of ministry. This is my second semester, and I'm finally obeying God and getting baptized. But there's a lot more to it than that. Um, Jesus has changed my life so much. When I was 16 years old, I basically used Jesus as my savior, and then I went off and did my own thing. And uh, I had a, I developed a severe, severe eating disorder. And my mom died in September of 97, and when she died, basically, she was an idol to me. And she and I basically died. My spirit was broken. I, uh, 
I didn't want to live. I wanted to kill myself. I thought about suicide at least four times a day. And in May of 98, I felt the presence of God for the first time in my life. And this was back in Nebraska. And uh, from then on, I just couldn't, I couldn't sin and I couldn't be a Christian because I wasn't on fire. So I was miserable. And finally in July, uh, God just said, I don't know what he said, but he set me on the straight path. And I just, I just went after God and I just threw everything out. I got rid of everything and I went after him. And he told me to come to this school and ministry. I had never been to Brownsville before in my life. And he said, come here. So I came. And the Lord gave me the biggest revelation here, and he just changed me around. It, he showed me that Christians, God is supposed to be your Lord and not just your Savior. And that means that you hear his voice and you follow him. And that it's normal to go where he's leading you. And he helped me not oppose myself because I thought I was weird. I was like, why am I doing this? I can only live for God. Why? This, isn't, this is weird. But it's not weird. It's right and it's normal. And it's Jesus, <laughs> and he's so awesome. And I tell you what, you guys, he's so real. I mean, I had real problems. I'm a real person, and this is a real God. Because he, I'm not kidding you guys, he counseled me. He was my counselor. I went to three counselors, and I, try, and I tried doing a self-help book to get help for this eating disorder. And I said, God, I can't do this. And if you are truly my Lord and you want me to follow you, I can't have any baggage. This has got to go. And he, in three weeks... He just dug out all this pain, and he healed me. And what he did was he revealed the truth to me. I had been bowing down to Satan. I had been believing his lies. Like, I had a strong fear of abandonment, and I just thought everybody was going to leave me. But when the word of God, when the truth came in there, and he said, I will never leave you, I said, Jesus, I choose this truth, and now I have life and peace, and he is my God, and I will do whatever I can to serve him. Praise God. We baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Ruby Torres, and I'm from Virginia. In 1974, well, first off, I got married when I was 17. I had my first child when I was 18. I had my second child when I was 22. And I realized later that he had a brain injury received from birth. He is now 24. In 76, I lost my sister in a car wreck, and I gave my life to the Lord. And I told wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly give my life to the Lord. But I said, I looked all around me, and, and I was in a church, and I can remember going to the bathroom and getting on my knees and praying, God, there's got to be more than this. God, there's got to be more than this. A few years later, my marriage broke. I turned my back on the Lord and I went my own way. I started smoking and drinking and just looking for love, someone to love me. And my husband was killed in a car wreck in 83 and we were separated and I carried that guilt. I just want to praise God. This is my third time down here last year in July. I came down with my husband, my second husband, and I, I had heard about this place, and I just felt a drawing to come here. I had to get here, and this is where we took our vacation. It's in July, and we went to this a week in the school of ministry here. And then in November, me and my husband came back, and since that time, God has led me. I, before that, I was in depression, deep depression because all I have ever been around is religion. It is wrong. Religion is wrong. This is real. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. 
This is what his Bible is all about. This is, is such freedom. There is no other way. There is no other way through any other route you might take in your life. This is the way, and Jesus is the way, and his presence is, is being poured out upon the whole world. And Lord, Jesus is coming soon. He's coming, and I know he's coming soon, and I want to pour my heart out to other broken people, and I want to bring them to the Lord, and I just, and I just praise you, Father God, and I've been just taking these videos back and if you can get these videos take them back where you are and just spread them around spread them around spread the fire in the name of Jesus and Jesus this time Lord I'm going with you Lord and I will not turn my back I will not go back I give you my all Lord and I just praise your name and thank you Baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Barbara Phillips. I'm from Virginia. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm not that much different than any other non-Christian up to this point. Um, I was a big sinner. I think I've done just about every sin there is to do. Um, praise God, no longer, no more. Um, I've, I've been a, a very broken woman up to this point. Um, even though I've practiced Christianity throughout my life, off and on, um, I always wanted to be a Christian in my and do it my way, um, that's, that's not possible, people. It's not possible to do it your way. You have to, to be committed totally to the Lord, give him all. And um, I know I was in a marriage about four years ago, and um, I felt as I was a Christian at that time. Um, however, I loved this man so much. He was a good man, and um, I, I think I started worshiping him and the marriage, and um, I was so broken when the marriage fell apart that I wanted to die. Um, one day I was on my way somewhere, grocery store, anyway, uh, the Lord took over. My car went to my friend's house, and... Um, I knew she was a Christian. I don't know how I got there, but I went in and I was so broken. She prayed for me and I become a Christian. Thank God, praise the Lord. In her house that day, I'll never forget. Praise you, Lord. And uh, she started teaching me and talking with me about the Lord. And uh, she showed me some tapes that she had brought home from Brownsville. Um, and uh, she showed, one night she showed me a Brownsville baptismal tape. And uh, um, I said, I gotta go. I gotta get there. And I couldn't wait. I'm like, every day was an eternity. I wanted to be here so bad. I said, I've got to go see the Lord in Brownsville. He wants me there. He wants me to be baptized. And oh, it seemed like a million miles to get here. And I was, as soon as I got here, I, I signed up for the baptismal before I even checked in. And, and I went back. I went back the next morning and I said, to make sure I was on the list. And I, I was now going to come down here and go home unbaptized. I didn't know how. But I want to be Jesus' bride. I want to love him and worship him. And that's why I'm here tonight, to be baptized. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh my goodness. Good evening. Uh, my name is Benjamin Guerrero.
Um, <clears throat> this is, wow, I'm from El Paso, Texas. And while well, my story is, um, I just, I, I'm, I'm stationed here in NAS, Navy Air, Naval Air Station in Pensacola. I, um, I just came here to, for my school, you know, and wow, this is how my story begins. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, we was going out, me and my friend, um, one of my roommates, we was going out to, to this club, so we, we just stopped for a while, you know, to check my wallet and everything. So, Eric, Eric Miller, one of, um, I don't know how, what they call it. Um, well, Eric Miller, he's somewhere in there. Um, um, he, he was, he began talking to us, you know, and so I thought it was, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go with him. So, this is my fourth time I've been saved, believe it or not. As a teenager, I'm 18 years old. It's very hard to go straight, to go straight with the Word of God. So this time is for real. And this time it's for real. Thanks, thanks to Eric Miller. And thank you, God. Baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, my name is Alex Hernandez, and I'm Benjamin's friend. And, uh... <laughs> Uh, I'm from California, and I'm also stationed here at Naval Air Station, going to school. And um, we were going out to a club, and like he said, we were about to go in, and we were, got dropped off by a taxi across the street. And then Chris Miller started talking to us and sharing with us the Word of God, and it was really interesting to us. And then we just wanted to learn more, and later on that night, we got saved. And... Uh, <laughs> And I'm just really glad that I did that, and this is the way I want my life to go. Amen. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wow. <laughs> um... This is definitely the last place I ever thought I'd be. Um, my name's Trey. Uh, Brownsville's my home. I, um, I've ran from God for a long time. I've ran away from his will for my life. Um, he's delivered me from alcoholism, premarital sex, um, racism, depression, suicidal attempts. But um, none of that's as important as the fact that he's delivered me from playing games with Jesus Christ. There's a lot of us right now, some of you sitting out here watching me right now, some of you watching at home, and um, you're sitting here and you're playing games with God. He's, he's calling us to a higher level. He's calling every one of us to a higher level. And we look at him every day and we say, Lord, I can't get up early and pray. I've got a rugged schedule. I can't get up and pray with you. I can't get up and read my word. But Lord, while I've got your attention, let me tell you what color carpet I want in my mansion in the sky. Let me tell you what kind of wallpaper I want, Lord. No, sir, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. You've got to be so hot. The Bible says you cannot be cold. You cannot be lukewarm. You've got to be hot. You've got to be so hot that you can step in this baptismal pool and begin to boil water. You've got to be hot, friend. You've got to be hot. I'm going to close with this. <laughs> oh, 
We bring a lot of our problems on ourselves. Brother Richard, I'm, I guess he's in overflow right now. Um, he brought up a good point last night during the revival. He said that a lot of times we bring up, we'll blame God for a lot of the problems that we brought on ourselves. Friends, keep your eyes on that. Our problems, we brought our problems on ourselves. It's not the problem of Jesus. He's the solution. He's not the problem, he's the solution. Brother Steve, tonight, I'm not going to hell with baptism waters dripping off my face. My name's Steve Huckabee, and I'm from Martinsville, Illinois. I wasn't uh, really happy or thrilled to come down here. <laughs> I had better things to do. I know now Jesus is the better thing to do. Yeah. Early in life, God put a woman in my life is my mother. She used to drag me to church every Sunday. <laughs> One thing that came out of that was, I think, part of what saved me and got me here. It was John 3.16. It was all going through my drug and my alcohol, my pornography. I don't know if there's anything that I didn't try. I brought it to God. Before that, there was another woman that he put in my life was my wife. And she, had, at the time when I was both in this sin, she's got her daughter. And we both uh, was doing this the devil's deeds, and our daughter was straying, and before we knew it, she was thinking of committing suicide. She got into uh, all sources of cults. But she went to Teen Challenge in Indianapolis, and they come down here to Brownsville. <laughs> and I seen the tape from Brownsville, and I had to come down, and God, has brought me here, my wife, my pastor, my church, Jesus saved me, he's delivered me from the darkness that I was in, Jesus is the light of my life. Thank you God for being there for me when I was not for you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, Lord. Thank you. My name's Joe. I'm a student at Southeastern Bible College in Lakeland. And uh, <laughs> I heard about the revival about three months after it started at my church in Jacksonville. And ever since then, I, I had a burden to come here. And uh, this was the first week I'd had a chance to come. And, and uh, between that time, I, I uh, many times I, I fell back from God. I, I backslid, I, I fell into all kinds of sin. I started a job as a bartender and, and drinking and, and partying and everything. I was searching for something, but I found it when I found Jesus. And when I came to the revival Wednesday night, when Mike Brown gave the altar call, God spoke to my heart and told me to go forward and, and to give everything to him. And I tell you tonight, don't let anything hold you back. Come down here and get your life right with God. Don't let just one little sin hold you back. Give it all to him. 
don't hold anything back. Wednesday night, I gave it all to God. Even the little things, whether it's just lusting with your eyes or whatever it is, whether it's being complacent or just, not, just being disobedient to God, give it all to him. He wants you, and he wants you to go out and tell others about him. And I just thank God for, for what he's doing here at this church and, and the outpouring that is going out to other churches and the revivals that are just spreading across this country and, and eventually across this world and on. And I just know that Jesus is going to be coming back soon, and I'm ready for him.